Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester, and I want to thank you all for being here. But I want to go ahead and uh, tell you that I, I want to give my expression of uh, appreciation over the loss of my mom. All the correspondence I got, it has just been so wonderful this past week. And, uh, you know, the, the sympathy cards, the, the emails, all the social media, the phone calls, and it just... It was really, uh, I really appreciate it uh, from the depth of my heart. Our family appreciates it and it meant so much to us. Uh, we had a beautiful service and of course we all know she's in a better place now. It just uh, was a, one of those times that was just special about to pull together. But you as a viewing audience and a lot, of, a lot of our friends and all meant a lot to us. All the texts and emails and all and phone calls. So thank you again. We do appreciate it. and. Uh, and uh, always, uh, you know, it's always think about your fellow man in a situation like that. It's been really good. Now, let's get on with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 7 and 7. It's only going to get up to 87 a day and a low of 75. And the water temperature is hanging in there around 84 degrees, so it really hasn't started cooling yet. So it will be soon, though, as September moves on. The river readings, take a look at the Appalachian Coal of Blunstown. It's reading a 2.9 and staying level. Not a lot of movement on in that area there. And the Choctatchee at Carville is a 2.4, both of them real low, and just not a lot of movement on, on either river now. The tide chart uh, brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. You get these charts down at C&G, looking at the day, September the 9th, not a lot of uh, a movement, right? well, about an average amount of movement, got about a 1.6 foot range there. And it's, the high is going to be at 8.15 this morning, and low will be at 6.12 tonight. Okay, and the marine forecast south-southwest at about 10 to 15. I'll take a break and be back with our guest. Okay, welcome back and welcome Ronnie Groom. Good morning. Always oh, great to have Ronnie on, but we're sitting here talking about all the, there's so much stuff going on now. This is a super time of the year, you know, <laughs> the fishing's good, the hunting's coming up, mm -hmm. dove season's coming, and it's just a great, and the weather's starting to get a little better, and mm -hmm. it's just a very good time of the year for a sportsman. We were laughing. Uh, you and I heard the same reports. It was just really good mayfly hatch last uh, couple of days down oh, there. Oh, yeah. And, that... uh, it, it, you know, mayfly, some people have a misconception. Mayfly's only going to hatch in May, yeah. but they're hatching all throughout the summer, and they just got to be around there and get it You're there when there's a hatch, buddy. That the action yeah. really picks yeah. up. We're probably going to tell the end of it now, but uh, it, it, it was a good one. Okay, bear season coming up. So That's why, right. Why, you know, the first, first bear one? season ever. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's sort of a trial thing to see how it'll go, but uh, game fish, you got it planned out. And uh, I don't know, We you know, we sell permits that they're $100, and we sell the permits for them. And it's a seven-day hunt, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. The bears are so uh, hard to come by. I mean, you, they're there, and we got too many of them, obviously, mm -hmm. but you, you hardly ever see them. Well, you and I both know a lot of times they move around at night time. They're nocturnal. That's right. And uh, it, they don't, uh, of course, you see them cross the road sometimes in the middle of the day, but that, that's a, that's those little young cubs and all. Yeah. They, they don't, uh, yeah. They're smart. You're right. Uh, it's, it's surprising how smart they are. Uh, I was up in the, in the in the lease yesterday riding around, and uh, Gene Cooper was showing me one of his feeders. They, they just demolished it. They mm -hmm. broke the pole. You know, we have to put a, a feeders on steel poles. You can't mm -hmm. just sit them on the ground or anything. They demolished his feeder and went and checked his next feeder. And uh, the feeder, you, you can't put your feeder pole next to a tree because they'll climb the tree and get your feeder. Uh -huh. So he put it away from the trees, but the bear went up and pushed the pole over so that it hit a tree. Then he climbed the tree and tore up the feeder. So he had that two feeders torn up in the... Yeah. He was upset about that, uh, but that's and, part of it. Yeah, and they're intelligent, and, and they are all over the place. I mean, we, we know they're all over the place, yeah. but uh, uh, the ability to get out and actually hunt them like a deer or something, coming to, you know, it's going to be harder than people think. Yeah, I don't, I don't look for them to take as many as they want because right. they have to start somewhere to see what, what's going to happen. Well, they're predicting that uh, Florida hunters will take about 320, but I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a lot less. Than I that. do too, because you know, in yeah. my lease, we've got bears, we've got. Uh, four or five I'm sure in there different ones and uh, we hardly ever see them I think in the last three or four years I've seen three two of them came to a feeder mm -hmm. and then uh, one or two cross the road and that's it you know and it's yeah. a, a slim chance plus you got seven days and you got to 
you got to be a hundred yards away from a bait, and you can bait, yeah. you can use corn, but uh, some kind of grain. But it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I laughed. Yeah. I, I, if I was going, if I was a bear hunter, I was going to hunt bear. Of course, it, this is not a hunting its own. But if I, if it was, I'd put my tree stand over there by Tyndall Elementary School. <laughs> yeah. I tell you why. My son teaches elementary PE over there. And he, on a regular basis, he'll send me a picture of a, of a bear. Yeah. And, and one day, the bear, one of the bears, actually got on the playground. Yeah. On in, inside the fence, and the little kid was telling him, hey, a "Coach, there's a bear." And he thought his kid, and it was on the playground. So, uh, that you know, and that's the thing about it. A lot of the bears we see are in a, like a no hunting area. Yeah. And around housing and all. So. You know, I live up on Deer Point, and we see them up there more than I see them in my leash. You know, mm -hmm. crossing the highway. Uh, uh, we saw some the other day cross right by the highway patrol station up there, yep. and the school down there right close by. They've been yep. seen there, you know. Yep. And uh, it's a problem. We've got too many, and uh, we just need to keep them under control what because what, they're problems. A good question I was going to ask. I thought about this the other day when you when you coming on. What what gun do you think these guys are going to be using bear hunting? What what are most of them going to be using? I think rifles yeah, because you got to yep. be a hundred yards away from them, yep. so you're going to have rifles and. A, a good, he pretty heavy caliber too, because they have a very thick hide, you know. And yeah. you, you want to have a gun that's, uh, that's sufficient. You want to do a good, humane job of, mm -hmm. of putting them down. And uh, I think they're going to be using larger caliber guns. That's the that's the way. You think uh, if, if you're going to hunt, will you just try to get in a crossing or down by a creek or something? Or how'd you do it? I tell you, I'd hate to try to shoot a bear just getting on a, somewhere if you don't have bait, if you don't have a feeder yeah. or some corn out. And you have to use corn now. You know, if, if you watch the hunting channels all the time, they use doughnuts and yeah. popcorn and all that stuff. Well, you can't do that here. Yeah. You got to use corn or grain, the way I understand yeah. it. Yeah. I guess people want to think about go buy Krispy Kreme, get a dozen doughnuts, eat half a dozen, yeah. throw a bear half a dozen. Or go buy a bakery somewhere, a grocery <laughs> store, and pick up old bread or something. But yeah. you can't do that. You got to, you know, we need to follow the law and do the right thing. Uh -huh. But I, I, it's going to be interesting to see. And if you if you take a bear, I think within 12 hours you've got to notify the game fish, and they have to check it. And, yeah. Now, do you have to tag it, or you just got to call it in? I, I don't. I'm I think sure. you got to take it somewhere yeah. and have it checked at a check okay. station. Yeah. And that way they can do uh, you know some bio, biology yeah. type work on them and make uh, help them out. And we definitely we have we do have too many of them. We so got that, too many. Yeah. You know, there's so many car that. wrecks and yeah. people are getting killed and they're mm -hmm. hitting bears and. Uh, then we just need to keep them under control like anything else. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. It's in Ronnie Groom. We're talking about bears. I, I pulled up that picture. Uh, John Boyce uh, sent us a picture of uh, this bear. This was at Tyndall now, crossing the road, headed toward Tyndall Elementary. He wanted to get there before he got tardy or something. But, uh, <laughs> they won't be late. They hang around there all the time. But that's just one sent to us by our viewers. And uh, like I say, Chip sees them on a regular basis out there. So, But that's a no-hunting area, so don't, right. don't hunt there. Right. So. Okay, talking about hunting. And this is going to surprise some people because... Uh, we always, the first Saturday of October is always for dove season. First day, first Saturday of October. Well, they're tricking us this year. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're moving it up. Right. Moving so, it up a, a week or so. Uh, it's going to be, you know, the September 26th. It'll be right around the corner and all. Are you hearing anybody talking about doves or anything? Not a whole lot, but I'm seeing a lot, you know. Of course, mm -hmm. these are local doves and the migratory birds are not here yet. We need a little cool weather, but uh, th there's always some doves here. As we always have a pretty good dove season if you got a place to hunt. You know? and, and that's the key to it, hunting, of course, a good spot, but the weather, you know, for whatever those cold fronts get in and drive yeah. the locals away and then bring the migratory right. in. You just, so this first couple of weeks will be, the, the hopefully, the uh, local birds and all. Yeah. I remember one year I was bow hunting out at Tyndall, and uh, the doves were everywhere on the field there, and I told Mr. Krigler, uh, my ex-partner, and I told him about it, and, he went out there that night. It got real cold. And he went the next day, and there wasn't anything there. They just left overnight. That flash sure do it. Yeah, they don't do I that. Think if you've hunted, dove hunted much, you've, you've been those, yeah. in those shoes before. That's right. They scattered all week, and they're all out there. Saturday morning, yeah. it's cold, and they're gone. They, they take off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got dove season coming up. Now fishing. You know, talking about fishing has been really good. Fishing is exceptional right now. Yeah. You know, the freshwater fishing is good, and. Uh, we're getting good reports on saltwater and flounder seem to be showing up really good because mm -hmm. we're getting a, a lot of people coming in buying a, a flounder and, you mm -hmm. know, lights and gigs and spear mm -hmm. fishermen are getting them and uh, 
it's just a good time for just about any kind of fishing. Offshore is being good, and mm -hmm. and I think they caught snapper this this past weekend. Some really good snapper pictures. I'll show you all those pictures. I got a whole set of pictures I'm going to show you all tomorrow. But I I wrote down like a midweek fishing report, and, and offshore, like you said, the snapper has been a great weekend on snapper. Yeah. And it got a little rough Sunday, but Saturday was a really good day. Uh, and Monday morning was was a little rough, but uh, some really nice snapper. I'm talking about some 18, 20 pounders. Yeah. And also with the mahi. The mahi yeah. bite has been yeah. really good for about three or four weeks now. So yeah. really, really nice. Uh, the uh, pier, off the pier, they're catching Spanish and bluefish. Uh, that, that's on a pretty regular basis. Inshore, uh, I had someone send me a picture of some really big school of redfish up there in the North Bay from that condo up there. They were seeing them send me a pretty picture, just a bunch of bunch of redfish up there. And also the uh, East Bay redfish and uh, then a real flounder. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I tell you something else that's really good is cast netting. The, the, boy, the mullet fishing seems to be good. Uh, my bunch has been catching them, and luckily mm -hmm. I, I, I get them from them, you know, yeah. it saves me going. But it seems to be really good, and they're having really good luck catching some nice, nice mullet. I mentioned that the other day. It rose about the size of your little finger, right. and uh, they're starting to, I'm starting Give to see another it. couple of weeks or so, and yeah. we'll have some red row. Some really good times coming up with that. Also wrote down uh, on freshwater, and we just talked about the, the mayfly hatch was uh, yeah. was recently, but the bass fishermen are doing real well. Yeah. And the rivers and all. Right. It's, it's really, really the time to go right now. Yeah. This is just a super time of the year. Well, it's cooling down. It's cooling down, and the, uh, the weather is just going to be excellent the next couple of weekends. Looks like mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't haven't had any monsoons, or anything, and and the river's right. And hadn't we been lucky with the hurricane? Man, we we have been. We we have been, and uh, and I, I don't want to uh, talk too much about it because <laughs> we might change our luck. But we we've been lucky. Yeah, because it, it peaks on the tenth of September. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about your, your food plots and all. You got your food plots pretty well going, and uh, are you no, about to get no, ready to? Most, a lot of people have, but I, we plan a little later. Uh, we'll start mowing probably this next week, you know, okay. and get, getting a couple of little old food plots ready, get it mowed, and, and probably try to disc it too so we can let it sit a week or two and then go back and disc it again and plant them. And, uh, but it's time to do it now, you know. It's time to get ready because... Uh, you need you need to get your fertilizer in the ground. It should already be in the ground, really, and uh, get the lime if you need lime. You know, mm -hmm. that's the secret to food plots is checking the soil, and make yeah. sure it's right. And so many people around here need lime in the yeah. soil. Yeah, and you know our soil is so we got this sand and uh, soil that's bad really for growing things, and it just leaches through the, mm -hmm. you, your lime and your fertilizer. And every year you got to do it again. It's yeah. not like you can. We got a lot of clay or something in the ground. Well, that's the thing about these farms up there in the Gaston County, Jackson County area. That soil was so rich, it, it retained yeah. a lot of that, but we, yeah. we don't have that luxury here. And, uh, right, and that rich soil is what goes good food, and that's what makes big and, difference. And that's why the state record buck comes from that area. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's hard to grow them very big on this sand in there, but it's amazing if you let them grow, live a while, they, they really, they, we, we, we produce some good deer down yeah. here on the coast. Yeah, we do, especially now I, I, that my mom's a, a services and all, I was able to uh, talk to my cousin who had still had, holds his Florida State record, Larry Furr, and uh, he he shot that buck in 1977 and mm -hmm. it is still the number one buck in Florida. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's amazing that it would last yeah. that long in any state and all. Yeah. And uh, but that's that's that area we talked about. But it, uh, I got a picture of one that's that you know scored probably 140, and that's a big deer. Oh uh, yeah. Really, be anything over 100 is well, large. Th this was 164. Yeah. And it, it was incredible. And it was old. It was old. For what it was, an old farm buck that uh, was in an area that really nobody really had hunted of. And and uh, we'd hunted there growing up. But we we you know what amazed us was that the the. The genealogy, we knew we'd kill some big bucks and have that same gene pool mm -hmm. in that same area within, say, five to ten miles, yeah. that strip right there. Even as, as youngsters, we'd kill some big bucks and we knew that's that same gene pool. That's right. And we'd have some, uh, and it was, it was farmland and protected swampland, and that's what they were able to do that on. The main thing on, I think, successful deer hunting is, is to let them grow. Mm -hmm. you know, let them get three and a half, four and a half years old. And, because past four and a half, you don't see many five and six and a half year no, old deer. They, don't. they 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 get so smart, you know. They hard to capture. Well, we're you know we we also the state now we're getting a little antler rule on it, and that's right. Going, that's that's going, improving things tremendously. That's a good move. It's saving those really young deer yep. that that not very smart and uh, yeah. 
give them a chance to learn. We say let them, let them go, let them grow. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take our final break, and we'll be right back with Ronnie. Welcome back. Let's look at a fishing game time for today, uh, brought to us by Mark Coward of Counts Real Estate out there on 30A, and our times are 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's right there in the middle of the day, and tonight, 1024 to 1224, you're going to go floundering. That'll be an ideal time, dead dead around midnight and all. What was your favorite time to flounder when you used to go floundering gigging? Anytime. Anytime. That's yeah, you know, I used to do a lot of spear fishing and and this time of year, uh, the flounder heavy, and we, we would have really good luck. But I also love to flounder at night, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's so pretty out there at night with the light and see what all's down there. And, and it is, it's a different experience to do yeah, that. It really yeah, it's is. really a lot of fun. It, it's, it's that peacefulness, that tranquility. Yeah, you got it to yourself. And another thing, too, I think why it so appeals to people like you and I is sort of like hunting and fishing. You sort right. of hunt for trying to look find right. them, and then you're able to get them. So that's uh, why I like spear fishing, because I could go hunting for fish. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, let's see, we're talking about, uh, let's see, whatever, you have something else to mention. You talk, got some sales coming up anytime soon? Or? Yeah, you know, we're this time of year, we're, we're getting in so much merchandise, guns and clothes and uh, crossbows and bows. We're just getting so much merchandise in that we, we're going to run a sale on some items and, and get rid of some things so to make room for this new stuff. And uh, we're going we're gonna to have some really good sales. I know we got some bows we're going to put on sale. We're going to give $100 off the regular price because oh, we got to make room to hang the new bows up. So uh, if, you, if you're if in the market for a gun or a bow or something, we got some a bunch of used guns that we're going to put on sale so we can make room for all the new guns coming in. Mm -hmm. We got new uh, shipments from Savage and uh, Ruger, and uh, we really got a good selection, and uh, we just need to make room for it. So come on down and uh, look and see what we got. Yeah, bow season right around the corner. Bow and, season's and, coming uh, up, and we just got a, a pile of crossbows in, and we got a, and we also carry a good, a very good selection of bows and crossbows for youngsters. Mm -hmm. I mean, from Six pound uh, bow test uh, right on up as high as you want to go, just about. So, and, I, and I've said this over and over again because I work with a lot of young people all my life. They love to shoot a bow. Bow is just they something about it. a it's bow. It's something about shooting, pulling that string yeah. back, even as a kid and all. And the most important thing about getting into shooting a bow is to start out right. Mm -hmm. You know, have somebody show you and it. If you're new into it, come down. We can help you, give you some basics and get you started. But yeah. if you start out wrong and develop bad habits and you keep using them, you get real good at those bad habits and it's hard yeah. to break them. Yeah, that, that's a good point too. And it, we're very elementary uh, situation as far as teaching basic fundamentals. Right. And, and you can you can expound other than just shooting at a target all the time. We'll do this on occasion. You can bring out a balloon or something. And yeah. There's so many different things you can do to yeah. keep a kid entertained with it. And you'll be... It always fascinates me how much they, they love to do that. I think I told you we used to do archery demonstrations for the schools and different mm -hmm. places, and uh, we would put an apple on a one of these uh, mannequin heads, you know, uh -huh. and shoot the apple, and everybody would say, hey. but if you'd shoot the guy between the eyes, everybody would cheer and clap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that, that's true. Okay, we were talking about a red snapper on it, and how uh, I got a picture here. This is almost this this is a picture here, one of our one of our viewers. I'm gonna, uh, this is fascinating. We're talking about the size of them, how they how they really gotten bigger. This is uh, open a weekend, and it's gonna be. On, you got it on the screen there to pick up. Okay, but anyway, aren't you fascinated with the uh, size of them and all? I am. You know, I I used to do a lot of diving, and and uh, we got a lot more snapper now than we used to have. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that the comeback is amazing. Okay, what's fascinating about this picture is Darlene Evans, she's fishing with her husband, or her father-in-law, and brother-in-law, and she's the one that caught it. This is 29 inches, 15 pounds, and also what's fascinating, she caught it two miles offshore, and that's, that's what got it. So uh, that, uh, that, that's uh, two miles offshore. That's right on the beach, and I'm telling, <laughs> I'm you, telling you, you don't have to go way out there anymore. Mm -hmm. You can catch snapper in close, you know, when, when the season's open, and that's kind of skimpy. Uh, okay, now we got a uh, got a couple minutes left. Uh, we got we know how, we got food plots are getting ready. with the food plots, uh, fishing is excellent. It's just a great time to be in the outdoors. Yeah, it's hard to find time to do everything. You know what time we have off? It's just hard to get away. Mm -hmm. 
Do y'all have, do y'all have flounder gigs and all down oh, there? Oh yeah, we got the flounder gigs and we got the poles for them. Uh, what kind got, of what kind of lights are a lot of people going to now? What, you know, we used to have those little thousand loom bulbs. I yeah. still have mine, but uh, they make a little bulb that's about that big around, about that long. Now I forget the name of yeah. it, but that thing is so popular. Okay, a lot, and, a lot of people. Is yeah. that, is that still go in the water. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, some yeah. people get them on top of the water. Yeah, that's I, the way I used to use. I had yeah. two lights, one on either side of the boat in the front. And uh, we used to, back then, it was legal, you could gig uh, other fish besides flounder. Mm -hmm. And we would run the boat, actually run it slow and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and pick up flounder and mullet, you know, whatever. And uh, that is just so, so much you can do in so many ways to do it in so many places to go. And you can wade in flounder, you know, you don't have to have a boat. That's something we, we don't talk about a lot. You can, what you can do, it really got some kids with you, you can have a crab, uh, a little crab net right, and, get you and some a gig. Crabs. And you have a little seafood buffet for a night time. Right. And we, I need to mention too that there's a there just seems to be a tremendous amount of crabs in the bay now, and remember you can't take the females. Yeah, yeah, we we talked about that. And also, you want to make sure that uh, you want to get big ones too, big old healthy. Yeah. I know somebody were catching some big ones to eat, then catching little ones to fish with, yeah. which is legal. Uh, yeah. But if you're gonna fish with them, that's an excellent bait for redfish. They eat too good for me to fish with. I, I know it. <laughs> so it's excellent bait. All right, Ronnie. Uh, now you got your sale coming up pretty soon. You got all kinds of stuff coming yeah. in down there. Yeah. And, uh, they can just come down there and they want to just talk to you. They can just come in and visit. We have so many people <clears throat> that just come in, bring their friends, and visit with us. It's like a museum down there now <laughs> if you haven't been. It's, uh, and we appreciate you coming. We, you, know, you don't have to come in and buy something. Just come in and talk to us and visit with us. I think you'll like us. And it's changed a lot of information, too. And right. And uh, right. on fishing and hunting and all. If you haven't been there, uh, run it's right in the Harrison Avenue. It's been there how long? Over 65 years. Uh, six, I've lost count. 60, 60 something years, which is an amazing story how. Our local sporting goods store, and probably in one of the longest running in America. I oh, would say. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, because a lot of them were just went when the generations changed. A lot of them went out of yeah. business. Yeah, yeah. Well, buddy, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Enjoyed it, buddy. All right, and folks, I always want to tell you how much we appreciate your viewership and uh, all the things you do for Panhandle Outdoors and and support our, our sponsors like Ronnie Bloom and CG Sporting Goods. So you have a good day. You do something good for your fellow man, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.